All right, guys. So thank you for getting on the call. Um, I appreciate it. I find tonight's Diamond Call is really important because I wanted to talk to you guys about the pulse of the company and kind of where they're at in a line with where our team has been to give us some answers of exactly what's going on. I know on the team perseverance call this week, we went over some great announcements with Apple branding us um, through the holidays, which is huge with the heart rate monitor and the beach body on demand and some other great announcements. Um, if you guys want to go see the call to get some of the stuff in the beginning, um, just I'm not going to go over all of that stuff, but there's some um, big things coming out with Beachbody on Demand and Apple and a bunch of other stuff. So I think that's important. But this is the thing I want to talk to you guys about and then talk and finish off a little bit about things I noticed at leadership. Um, as many of you guys know, um, probably in May of this year, our team as a whole, and the reason I want to give you and lay this foundation is because we have become one of one of the stats of what's going on with the company. But back in May is the first month since I, since the team started growing, when I really started focusing on the business in early to uh, summer 2013, that the team actually wasn't growing by size. Meaning we were growing by the week. We were hitting, we hit 1900 coaches in May. And I can tell you that May through this month of October, we were sponsoring coaches as quickly as we were losing them. And some of you know, I even, we had a diamond call to try to regroup, come back to the team page, team P page, what's going on. I know I even kind of got upset about it. I felt like, you know, what, you know, what am I doing wrong as a leader? Where are we failing? How can we get better? I know some of you are on there. So at leadership, um, they brought up, and I'm going to share my screen of some of the things that they have noticed, which is directly affecting the network and what's going on. Um, let me share my screen here. And what I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to um, I'm going to mute everybody. And if there's anything to be said, please just unmute your line just so we can hear it. So the first thing they kind of started with here, um, uh, come on, was really how important it is that the roots of Beachbody go back to um, before they even had the coaching network. And it was just Beachbody programs like P90X and Power90. And there was message boards and how the network kind of started because people were helping people get results before the coaching network started. And then it kind of clicked that, wow, maybe there's a business opportunity here because the founding coaches said, hey, we probably should be compensated for all these people were sending to buy P90X and they weren't. So at the end of the day, the coach helps people get results and the partner effect is really what they, they spoke about. But I want to get right down to the nitty gritty with you guys as leaders. So the, and I'm going to show you some slides after. Basically what they have seen, and this is all started and it's kind of quite a wake up call in the month of May, kind of the end of last year, but the month of May, there was a big switch in the network. And this is kind of the bullet points. I'm going to show you the numbers. The direct to coach signups are way up, meaning people that were never, never done beach body programs, or maybe they've done it once, but they never were a lifer or an advocate or had a success story or in a challenge group. The number of coaches signing up as coaches right out of the gate are, went, up through, went up very high starting this past six months of the year. The direct coach cancellations were a lot higher than the customers to coaches who stay, our advocates, meaning these people that basically didn't have a Team Beachbody account or really weren't Beachbody customers, they were increased in the amount of them that signed up as coaches but they also had a much higher cancellation rate as coaches than those that were customers first. They found that the Shakeology retention was way down for people that signed up as a coach right out of the gate, meaning Shakeology, they're trying it for the first time, maybe in their first challenge group as a coach, the retention was way down, which directly impacts volume as a whole. They also found that the same time frame, the, time frame, the percentage of coaches that were inactive and not working was high. They found the cancellation percentage was much higher for the direct to coach signups, which I mentioned. And they've also proven, and we know this, that the customer to coach enrollments, those that were lifers, that were advocates, that were through challenge groups, had results that they, by, by the stats, have earned a lot more money than those that say, hey, I want to get to be a coach because of the business, and then they don't end up becoming lifers. So, these are some of the stats, and I want to, I'm going to sh um, blow up my screen so that you guys can see. This is Shakeology growth as a company, and they asked us, you know, this really wasn't 
to share with all the newer coaches, but the leaders, I want you guys to see this. If you notice, in the month of May, they had the inversion, meaning we started having less home direct people that went on home direct and stayed for a second month. It actually went below than it was in 2015. So 2016, it crossed where it was less. The next slide shows that um, there's the left side is showing where the it inverse and in Shakeology sales and the continuity billing, meaning people that retained and stayed on Shakeology more than two, three months, also reversed in August and it's below where it was last year from a year ago. They found, and if I'll try to explain this, coaches that stayed on the most important year, if you look at 16 and 15 here on the right, we have predominantly more inactive coaches than we've had from 2013 is way back. But the network's growth in the last two years where they had the sweet spot, more inactive coaches, and we have a very high number, very, a smaller number of organization builders. Those are the people that are building the business. So if you look at like last year to this year, your retail coaches went from 16% to 13%. So that went down. Your predominantly inactive coaches went from 18% to 23%, so that went up, okay? So, they, so they, they're basically noticing that these people that are signing up as coaches out of the gate that weren't loving the products first, they're not staying on Shakeology, they're canceling a lot more, and it's directly impacting them being inactive and a lot of the connections of what's going on as a whole. The next um, picture here. Um, it said, they said, are we enrolling advocates? So the direct-to-coach enrollment, as you can see, and this goes back from 14, 2014 to 15 to 16, has really went up through the roof by 60%, meaning people are onboarding coaches for the business right out of the gate. But the proof is in the pudding is that what's happening is these coaches aren't sustaining and they're actually hurting the network more than it's helping. Um, next is new coach performance. Coaches who join and cancel in the same year, 26% of coaches that were signing up directly as coaches, 26% of them have a, you know, were canceling or 17% were canceling that were customer converted coaches. Um, customer converted coaches earned 14% more in their first year. And then they kind of went and summarized with that the best coaches are the ones that go from newbie to participants in the challenge groups to enthusiasts to advocates of the product, then in fact are coaches, turn on as coaches. And then I shared in the team call, guys, just some stuff. I'm not going to get into it now because I want to stop sharing for a second of how important um, some stuff with challenge groups was. But basically, Carl Deichler came out, and this is what he said. He said, guys, listen, not saying it's not cool and great that people are buying cars and you know, paying off debt and sharing that because it has helped us do some amazing things. And even all the, many of us on our team, myself included, and he says, and that's great. And we sh and people need to share that. But we have lost what the network is about. And we have more people that are coming on that aren't lifers. And after a month, they're like, ah, I haven't lost a lot of weight. Nobody wants to buy anything from me anyway. And they're canceling. And their Shakeology retention is down. And to say that this isn't affecting our team as a whole would be, would be false because the same time this all switched from last year to this year and the growth started declining, it in fact is the same time that our team stopped growing. Like exactly, the month of May, everything stopped. So we as a whole, all of us as leaders as a whole are basically right in the thick of what has occurred as the network as a whole. So Carl is just saying we need to go back to – he kind of – he gave this analogy of, of a box where people used to get excited about what was in the box and it was the program and they would do the workout and they'd get results and they would share it passionately and, you know, and they were believers before they were even coaches. They were believers of what was in the box. Here's Kristen here now. Believers what was in the box. So what he's saying is that we need to go back to what's in the box and stop – focusing so much on just signing coaches up just to sign coaches up because what's happening is that's what's been affecting our volume. I could tell you team volume as a whole for our team 
really has plateaued in the last 10 months where it's always consistently grown. I'm sure they feel it too. You know, and I know everybody here feels it. You know, I know a lot of you guys have messaged me. You're feeling it too, like Kristen's saying in my ear. I, I know a lot of you guys have messaged me too, and it's flat. You know, that people's income's flat. It's actually went down. But the one picture I, I think I want to show you guys, so, we, there's, so there's no um, overall, here it is here. Let me just share this picture. Is that um, Team Beachbody as a whole, um, this is the company with the growth, U.S. sales and millions, is on the upward swing and big time from 13 to 15. This is 13 to 15. It's on the upward swing. And they put up all the other top uh, other network marketing companies, Herbalife. Um, they had um, Avon, Advocare. It was Pampered Chef up there. No, but we by far, everybody else has been steady, like kind of like flat. We are growing the most and have the biggest upwards tick. So there's no concern that the company's not doing well. We'll come out of it. But they're saying in this little piece, when everybody's affecting and the panic with the volume, it's come down to that we have many more people that are just onboarding as coaches and not being advocates. So this is, what, this is the next thing I want to say is that we, we don't, I'm not saying we need to cancel and stop doing coach sneak peeks. I, I, I'm not saying that. However, we really need to reevaluate as leaders that, you know, we may get, we may sign somebody up on a coach sneak peek that's a worker, maybe once every three coach sneak peeks that we do. And you may be like, wow, I'm having another diamond. But all the effort that we put into the sneak peeks and the time and changing it up, maybe that effort, and I'm saying maybe, should be focused on making our challenge groups better, inviting more challengers, helping people get results, which goes into the other part of my slide that I shared on the team call um, was that in fact that they found like participants who received a biweekly call were had a 78% chance, 78% uh, more chance of exercise. Um, they increased their progress. Um, another slide is biweekly calls um, were increasing at increased levels of 18 months after the calls ended. So this is like the personal touch to helping your people get results first. Um, so I thought, you know, we as leaders really need to um, focus on making our challenge groups back to basics. And that's where we need to focus for growth. Because yes, you may get that anomaly coach by signing them up right out of the gate. And this person's going to be the best. They want to work the business. But the proof is in the pudding. And if we go back to when our team really grew, it was challenge groups, challenge groups, challenge groups. And once we started adding so much more and sneak peeks, you know, that's when, you know, and the team stopped growing. So we're a victim of it. And I want to finish with this and I want to open it up to you guys. Being at leadership this year for Kristen and I, we basically spent our time in five days with pretty much nothing. And, 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 I'm, and I'm proud to say this, guys, that we, we as a team have been elevated to this point, but it was you know, dinner, dinners and sitting by the pool and at workshops with 15 star diamonds, talking, hanging with Scotty Hobbs for a while, Saudi Almonte, 15 star diamond, Tara Bilek, Christina Delgado, Becky Brissett. Like that's who we, our group of six or seven people were the top of the company. And this is one thing I noticed guys, and I, I'm going to challenge all of you and I'm going to, and I'm just going to say this. Their, the way they speak and their focus was always Focus forward, solution oriented. What can we do to get better? You know, like their mindset was at another level, no matter who it was. It never was, it's a slow time of year. I don't have anybody that's not working. Like they're like, if I don't have anybody, I let them go. What do I need to do next? What do I need to do next? What are we doing to improve? How can we, you know, you know, double down on our work? Melanie Mitro says she works three times as hard October, November, and December so she can set it up for January. And the reason why I thought this was so powerful is that it, it made me stretch my mindset and thinking we all need to stretch our mindset. Like I know I saw Kristen put a post up. I didn't get to see all the comments, but like, Hey, is anybody have anybody for amp? And it was like, no, 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 I don't have anybody tough time of year. You know, things are slowing down. It's the holidays. And I challenge all of you guys. That's not the way we should be operating. Like if we want to elevate our game, we need to grow as leaders. So it starts with you personally growing, 
with me personally growing, with Kristen, with all of us personally growing, and we need to be focusing at a higher level. And after taking what we took away from leadership with the challenge groups, we need to like kick ass and core to force. We need to be finding, helping our people get results and focus on people first, help them achieve. And they kept putting up on the screen, help people achieve in capital letters, their goals, T-H-E-I-R, their goals. They kept hitting on that. We need to, we need to be forward thinking. We need to be improving ourselves. How can we be, do better? It's a, it's a rough time of year, guys. I, I hate to say it because I get fired up. It's, bull, it's bullshit that it's, a, it's the holidays. Like we need to 10X, Grant Cardone. We need to better ourselves as leaders. We need to be helping our challengers better. We need to go back to basics. Because when, I, when we were talking with people, it was so obvious. They are where they are because they're not saying no, things are slow, coaches are quitting. Their mindset was, it's not my coach's responsibility for my business to grow. It's not my friend's responsibility that they didn't buy the challenge pack so I didn't hit success club. It's your responsibility. It's your job. If you want it to get done, get it done. So like, Kristen, you want to add to that? No, I was just going to say that um – you know, like I said in my Monday motivation video, I left there feeling like we're on the right track. Like yeah. this team, like we do this the right way. All of you guys, like we do this the right way. I just feel like we just need some tweaking. That's, yep. that's really all it is. Like we, our hearts are in the right place. Yep. We're not those teams that are trying to be top 10 that are just like recruiting machines, like recruiting 40 coaches a month and you don't even know their names. Like I know we're not like that. So it may – I, I, like I said, I left feeling like, wow, okay, like, alley up, I'm saying we're doing the right thing, and like, like, yeah, all of them. because they like, called some people on the carpet, and corporate actually spoke to Kristen and I, because they, 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 they be able to look at our organization, and said, based on what's going on with some of the stuff in the network, we actually are doing well, and they called some people out, some of the main leaders called out some of the people that are signing up 40 coaches a month. Well, you had... There was top 10 coaches that were crying. Right, yeah. Because they, they know that they but, – but also, you know, it comes back to a little bit to Beachbody because we push elite so hard, right? Yeah. And people are trying to get that goal. And how do you get that goal? you got to recruit. you got to recruit. you got to recruit. But you got to do it the right way. And, and, and it made me think, like, slow and steady wins the race is okay. Like, yep. we don't have to race to the top. We don't have to, you know – recruit the most amount of coaches in a month like it's okay if we don't if we recruit two quality coaches a month as opposed to six losers yeah that are better gonna quit in six it's months, better that's okay like that's okay for us and um so I, I i feel like we're okay like we got this like we know what we're doing and we're doing it right so i just think that it's just a matter of tweaking it and, and and making sure you guys are all aware of the trends right that it's happening across the the company and not just with us yep um, and they are going to tweak things like they're discussing yeah. about changing elite. Like you, you get, you get points if you have somebody that retains and stays on Shakeology as a customer for three months or more, or you don't just get a coach to diamond, but you help one of your coaches get from maybe team leader to organizational leader. Like you're building somebody on the leadership ladder, which requires them to be building their organization instead of just getting points from you know, people just, you know, the other levels that are in elite, like they're really, they're looking at everything. They're looking at everything. They gave us these stats. I feel very good that we only, we only need tweaking because I think we do do challenge groups. Well, I think we just got to go back to basics and tweak it. Um, and that's really it. And just that to, uh, all of you guys, like, like, I love all you guys. You're all leaders. You've hit diamonds. You got there on your own. And therefore I challenge to stretch you as we got challenged to get stretched when we're there to elevate yourself personally with your reading, with your growth and to not think, you know, to be solution oriented, not blame the timing, not blame your coach, not blaming a customer. Like, no, it's on all of you as leaders on all of us as leaders to be pushing forward to help ourselves get to the next level. So I want to open it up. Any questions, comments, some feedback, please don't let it be silent guys. Cause I, I want to, hear from all you guys or hear what you have to say. I, I actually love what you're saying because I feel like, I know I spoke to you guys about this in the past, but recently I have gone back to the basics and I feel like it's making such a difference. It's not changing 
my organization overnight, obviously, but right. the people in the group are so much fired up more than ever. They sent me messages like, this is the best group you've ever done because I'm investing so much more. Like I'm daily showing up to the group's live videos every day, checking in, giving motivation, um, doing different little things during the week. But I'm like so much more present than I ever was. Like I truly feel more like a coach than ever. And I'm really just trying to get them results. And so I love that because I remember there, like when I first started, I remember getting 26 success club points and you guys were like, what the heck are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I didn't even know. Like, I didn't know what success club points meant. And I look back at that and I'm like, that's when I was just being real. I wasn't trying to work the business or make money. I was just doing my thing. Then when that started going down, I started reassessing and thinking, you know what? I got to go back to basics. And I truly, I couldn't agree anymore with what you guys are saying. I think that would make a huge difference if we just shift our focus. And I think you have to have a balance of the business and their goals. And it can't just be all business. You know, you just have to find that balance. And if you sign somebody up, like we spoke about it, because I'm not going to stop trying to sign people up as coaches that maybe want it, but kind of like how I, we've you know, like our, our, the Team Perseverance Vision, inspire, invite, help, connect. Inspire people, help them get results, invite them to the challenge groups and connect. It's been like that from day one. But if you sign up a coach out of the gate, don't put them, maybe they don't need to go and coach basics. Help them get results. Start help them become, the challenge start with the always. challenge group. Make them be lifers and they'll stick around. But, you know. Um, and something that Ali Upham, I think it was Ali Upham said it. And, and Regina, you just remind me of it. That's great. You go live every, I love that. I love that. But she said, um, instead of goal setting, joy setting. Yeah. And she said, and I had a, I had a call with um, some of my coaches. What's today? I don't know. Tuesday. And um, we talked about joy setting as opposed to goal setting. And joy setting means like you enjoy the process, right? And then you enjoy what the process produces, right? Because if mm -hmm. you're, you're, you know, if you're feeling excited and happy about what you're doing, right? You're going to have naturally the, you're going to love what it produces, but you're not thinking about what it produces, right? You're just thinking about that. the moment. And, um, and so we, we all went around the horn, me and my coaches, and we said, what brought you joy when you first started coaching? Or even in your first challenge group, think back. And for me, I remember clearly it was our first challenge group when 225 was released. And honestly, like, I feel like this quarter force release reminds me a lot of the T25 release, like with the excitement and like, I think it's a game changer program. And I just remember being so excited to check in with the group every day. Cause I had my first two challengers that month and like, I couldn't wait to get up. Like that's all I had to do was just check in the challenge group. Now, like as a leader, you have a bazillion groups are in like you're yeah. spread thin. So I know for myself, I'm not as invested in my challenge groups as I once was. And I want to get back to that because that's what brought me joy when I first started. So think back to what brought you joy when you first started and lead with that. Like get back to that. And so I that think, way it doesn't, you know, you I won't think what get we did on the coaches page, I don't know if many of you guys saw the video, but it uh, exploded on our coaches page. Who wants to be in the next coach test group, next beach by test group. And then we went on, and this wasn't my idea. It was a Candace from the wall went on the team page and said, all right, the next test group is core to force and you're in it. And we're doing it as a team and you're going to treat it like the test group. And when was the last time you actually took your measurements weekly? You followed the nutrition plan beginning to end. You shared your journey every single day and you got people fired up. Like, let's, let's go back to that because they're not releasing another program in the new year. They purposely want for us to be able to breathe, get back to basics, and um, they want us to ride out quarter and force. ride out quarter four. So I think everybody, we should all take quarter force, do it as is. You know, do the photos, share your photos, like do it as if you're in a test group. You know, seven imagine, days. Imagine all the before and afters we would have just from our team alone, mm -hmm. right? Like from all you guys and stuff. I mean, look at the results between Laura Carter and Kristen and Gina. I mean. When you're in a test group, the results are there. How about, like we said, and we have a ton of the coaches on the team all want to do it. Like, you, and you do it, you do it in the month of November, and you're going to have people that are excited for December, and it'll take you to the new year. Like, this isn't a time to say, ah, you know, this is a holiday time. No. Um, who else? Somebody else was about to speak beside Gina. Who was that? It was me, Kelly. Who was? How are you? I'm, uh, I'm. And uh, Shannon, we got you next. I just saw your hand. Go ahead. 
Kelly. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure who you were talking to. No, I'm just, um, you know, one of my comments is that, you know, for me myself, I feel like when I'm starting to get bored with the programs, that's why I think Court of Horse is so exciting because I'm excited about it. That's going to trickle down to my challenge groups. I have people already that, you know, now because, you know, for a while there, I was so invested in my challenge groups and I have like a core group of coaches, even though they're discount coaches, they were like my core group from, you know, a year ago. And now I have people who are almost up to their 60, 70 pound weight loss. So they didn't work. They weren't interested in working. They were only excited about their journey. They're now excited about core divorce. So they're going to continue their journey. They're still as motivated as ever. And now two of them have people you know, they just messaged me this morning that they have people that are interested in core divorce too and learning about what they're doing. So inadvertently, they're becoming working coaches and they don't even really realize it. It kind of just fell in that way. And for me, you know, one of the things that I've always struggled with is um, I'm, I don't really consider myself a leader. What I've been doing is managing and I hate that. It's something that you know, I, I started focusing on and then, I, you know, now I'm switching to the more spiritual side of personal development. But, you know, I feel like um, it's hard for me, my personality to, you know, as a coach, when I get it, when I have a, um, a, a GSR talk with, with one of my new coaches, it's uncomfortable for me to throw them right into coach basics because I know how I was. I just wanted to lose weight. I just wanted to feel good. And then naturally I was like, well, hey, now people are asking what I'm doing and that's how I fell into it. So, you know, I, I just feel like if we get people happy with what they're doing, happy with their results, it's going to inadvertently turn into working coaches. Yep. And, yep. you know, this core to force launch, I'm freaking excited about it. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be better again in my challenge groups. I felt that way with 21 Day Fix, Hammer and Chisel, and now Core to Force. I'm freaking excited about it. And I also wanted to let you know, too, what I am doing, and I don't know, you know, I'm, I – and getting this idea from Katie Ersta back a couple of months ago, I saw that she used event pages as a holding group. So the event page that I did for my free group, I've kept open. I have like 330 people that I invited in there. So I'm still posting before and after pictures. I'm still posting, um, you know, um, you know, cute posts, um, you know, cute posts and things about, um, you know, the importance of a strong core and, um, you know, whatever. I'm just always posting at least twice a day in there. And what I'm excited about is when I purchase my program on Monday, I'm going to be throwing it in there and making a huge deal about it. So these people are like, well, what the hell? Um, you know, they're seeing all these posts. I'm having my coaches post when they order the program. So I'm hoping that inadvertently by these you know, 300 and whatever people that are in this event page, even though they're not interacting, even though they're not really showing their face, and I'm sure they're just watching, they're going to be like, well, hey, what is this all about? You know what I mean? So it's going to pique their interest because they're in this holding group. Absolutely. I, I love it. Shannon? I, I think Sharice made a good point too in the chat. It's not, it's not how people sign up that's important. It's what they do once they sign up. So I agree. I, I, I agree. I think sometimes we can scare coaches off by saying, let's get you right into coach basics. You know, oh, you've never done a challenge group. You do your challenge group the same time you do the coach basics. Like, I think that's, that's overwhelming. And I think that can scare people away. But sometimes, and, sometimes the name can scare them. Oh, I'm a coach. Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, there are people on this call that signed up to be coaches, like a coach right off the bat, right? And so it's rare, but it does happen. So I think you just, you just Actually, have to I'd play to, off the person. By a show of hands, anybody, raise your hand. Did you sign on first as a coach or were you more of a customer, love the product, converted? Anybody raise your hand. Were you a coach first? Greg. Just the one. Hey, at least we have one, but the, I guess that, but that's telling in itself. There's how many of us, there was 16 on, there's 15 on. So it's a staggering more number. Look, we're all diamonds or higher and we were all customers first. Shannon, go ahead. I know you had your hand up. Um, so Kelly, I loved what you said about, um, you know, the organic growth. Um, you know, yes, you, 
you come on board because you know you need you you know you needed something right and we all wanted to feel good so constantly reminding ourselves of our first challenge group and how, and when we became coaches because you know that's what you do is really is really important the fact that someone's coming to us and trusting us with their journey is huge and um so i i love that you said that because i always remind myself of that as well um but i want to i want to share with you something a discussion that i have incorporated probably i don't know i'll say like in the past six months with new challengers I've almost started qualifying my challengers to be in challenge groups, Me meaning it's like, it's almost like, you know, a dating period to see if this is a match, right? Because somebody may come to me and say, oh my gosh, you're, you look great. You, you inspire me. I want to do what you're doing. And, you know, it's almost as if they look up to you and I'm like, okay, well, it's not me. Okay, we are a team. And so I have that discussion with them that what we do is not just fitness. What we do is very much a community. And I share that with them and saying, you know, let's participate. You know, of course I coach them through what's, you know, what's best for them and what kind of program they would like to do, if this is a journey that they want to start. I, but once they make that decision, I have that conversation with them that, this is going to be 30 days and it's sort of like a test like do you like what we're doing we love it this is our gig we've been doing it for years and we need this so for these 30 days you are in a challenge group with other people who are new as well some of us aren't we're going to coach you through this and at the end of that challenge group we're going to ask you if you want to be on our team or not and then the discussion of, well, what does it mean to be on your team? And I leave it as simply, listen, if you enjoy it, we will discuss it then. Like, it's either you're going to love it or you're not. And when you're, when I, ever since I've been upfront with people that way, that they will get an invitation to be on my team, when I have that conversation with them, there's nothing weird about, weird about it. They're like, I absolutely would love a discount off my Shakeology because this was awesome and I love it. You know, so they, but it was very much upfront. Like I have certainly had people say to me like, you know what, that stuff's expensive. And even with the discount, you know, they weren't showing up every day. You know, they weren't buying into the whole group community. It just wasn't the right fit for them. And then they kind of, but the conversation of inviting them to a community, to a team that we absolutely love and we're all, you're trying it out was, has really been awesome in, and it, it just, it's just been a really good conversation piece before they even buy a challenge back, you know? Um, and yeah, so that's, that, that's been a very positive thing for us. The second thing I want to share is um, um, reigniting your long-term discount coaches. Um, I think Core to Force is a perfect way. Anytime a new product comes out, it it does. It rejuvenates everybody. Everybody wants to be in the test group. Um, you know, unact inactive coaches become active again. It's a great idea. Um, but reminding people why we, Stacy and I, do what we do, that it's more than just the fitness component. It's actually the feeling that we have to inspire someone, to work with someone and watch them through their transformation. And that is a piece that we know that some people haven't experienced yet. So what would that be like if each of us actually inspired somebody to participate in a group, you know, and, and just asking them to feel like, wow, wow, it would be really cool if my, my sister did this with me, or it would be really cool. Just putting in their minds that, again, we do this not just because we're getting fit. Yeah, we want to maintain our healthy lives, 
and that's why we definitely do it. But it's also because of that feeling that we have in our heart every single month with inspiring new people. Otherwise, if you're not doing it because you're passionate about it, because you really like helping people, then, you know, again, what's the point? Right? It's a good, it's a good point. I love that you highlighted to get to reconnect with the coaches. And that's the whole point about doing the court of force test group that I put the post up. And there's a lot of coaches that commented, I want in, I want in, let's do it. Let's do it. That were inactive coaches that aren't working. So I challenge all of you guys to rally your troops and your whole downline. I sent about 30 messages today to all my coaches inactive, haven't been in challenge groups. I think about eight or nine are in. And I love what you said, Shannon, about um, inviting them to the community as mm -hmm. opposed to saying coach, which it kind, of, uh, it kind of like points to an individual thing, whereas community and team, you know, you're inviting them into a, a support group type of thing as opposed to saying you want to become a coach. Right. So I like how you phrase that. That probably makes a difference, too, with how they um, kind of see it. Thanks, Shannon. Who else was going to say – I know there were some other people – Where's Michelle? Is Michelle on? I got one thing to say real quick. Uh, sorry for the same camera angle and all, but uh, uh, you know, Shannon and I were talking about this today a little bit about you know if you think about it, you know, one out of fifty coaches become a diamond coach, right? And it, it's a huge transition, or it's just like a um, a total difference between someone who wants to work out and someone who wants to build a business to some degree. So. I think in general you need to expect one out of 50 people are going to build a business, in my opinion, right? I, it's, I just think it's uh, a fact to some degree. But one thing I love to, like Kristen said tonight, I think Kelly may have said it too, is if you treat, um, especially quarter force coming up, as like your first challenge group ever, people will feed off of that energy. And, and you know, remember, like, like I was just saying, not everyone's going to invite, not everyone's going to build a business, but as business builders and leaders on this team, if you if you get back to the energy that you felt from your first challenge group, it's just gonna feel more normal. And then that's what I love about a new program. Country Heat didn't do it for me. But Court of, Court of Force. I know you didn't like Country Heat. <laughs> no, I, I didn't do one. I didn't do one workout. But Court of Force, I did on Monday the workout, and I am uncoordinated as shit. But by the end of the half hour, at least I can get some of the kicks and the hooks and all that stuff. But, we have some good footage. But, <laughs> yeah. like to see that. But, but, but I think everyone in here, why did you get involved? I think about like way back when, uh, when there was just message boards. Why do people do this? It's to get, it's to get fit and to feel good. And so if you, if you, I really think Court of Force is going to do great because of the fact that people who are business builders in, in the network right now, coaches, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to get back to the basics. The back to the basics, like Dave is saying, is, oh, why did I get involved originally? The workouts. And so now, if I'm doing a new program that I'm, I like, I'm going to, I'm going to you know, uh, transmit that energy onto social media, and therefore, you know, it's, it's going to be uh, back to day. Right? That's why we all got vibe, I think. So. No, I think, guys, this is a perfect time with quarter four. I think we all got to. I think it's good time. And you know what? Too. Personally, for all of you, it's not just about your team. It's about you. You need to be doing the group. You need to be doing the nutrition, taking your measurements, sharing on social media. I haven't really held myself accountable on a program in a year, two years. I want to do this beginning to end. Maybe that's a way to invite people who want to join me on the journey. But you need, we all need to do it, our teams and, and ourselves. Um, who else? Thanks, Stace. Yep. Um, I, I, I just have a, cu a couple quick things to say. Um, Chrissy, I absolutely love the joy part of it. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely lost some of the joy. I definitely have. Yeah. And it sucks when you realize that, you know? Yeah. Um, one thing about that, though, running the groups in the tracker in the app group in the app is so difficult to get people fired up. Because you can't go live in the group. You can't have people post videos, post welcome videos and stuff. It's really tough. And with this whole um, team spirit thing where they want us on, on the app, but yet core to force launch where you want to be able to do videos and, uh, you know, do live videos and upload things, can't really run it on that in the, in, 
in the app. But anyway, that's that's the negative part. Um, we want to be positive. So um, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to just say, which I messaged Dave about the other day, is um, we do these sneak peeks into coaching, and I know we talked about this on a diamond call when we first started the diamond calls about a sneak peek into the challenge groups. Michelle and I did create one, and um, we ran it for our team, and it was great. We, we I, I believe other coaches had success with it. We had a, a good amount of pe people come in to check out what the challenge groups were all about. Um, so I will post that in the diamond group. So if anybody wants to use it, tweak it, make it your own, whatever you want to do with it, um, by all means, because like I said, it was, it was really good and it was a lot of fun to do. It was a lot of fun, a sneak peek into the challenge group. Chad, can you post the content on the, uh, on the diamonds page? So we yeah, I'll post the whole document. And the, like, I'm sure there's going to be things that you want, people would want to change. Like Dave, I know there was one thing that we showed it to you. And I know there was one thing you said, one of the videos was all women, you know? So, so you know, if you're a man and you want to have, have do this, just take it and make your own video for that spot. You know what I mean? But, um, it was good. And it, and when we ran it, it, it was a success. So I would, uh, I'll definitely share that with everybody. I just, uh, I remember my Exciting challenge group was T25 when the team was the 54 coaches. Cause I'm like, this is it. We're just going to work out and get in shape and do it together. And it was such as, as it's Shannon simple. before as like a community and the last 10, 11 months, it's been a grind in the last six months. I've, I've been, you know, like there's something majorly wrong here. Our team is, we're gaining 40 K coaches a week. We're losing 40 a week. Also, we know? have to think about like how many challenge groups have we all been in? Yeah. I mean, come on. Like, right. You know, so right. Many. So like for us, it's like, it gets old, right? It does. So, so, but we have to remember like a new person coming in, like what that felt like, you know? And, yeah. and I think we forget because we've been doing it so long, you know? But I think that's why it's important for us to stay excited about, you know, our fitness so that we can yeah. trickle that down into the challenge group. Well, do it, treat it like, treat it like you're in the test group. Like, Kristen will tell you the, I, the homework, the stuff. I'm going to be giving you guys the homework. We're going to do it. You're like, we're going to do it. Like, we should. We're yeah. going to do it like a real test group. Look how cute that baby is. I mean, think about why was it that the best results come like, best results I got when I was in the hammer and chisel test group. Best results Chrissy's had in her life. Yeah. In the quarter. Because I can't group. eat a freaking donut. Right. Damn but it. but the thing but the thing is, is that it created excitement. You know, it's just, if you did that with your people or on your page, you're going to attract, Stacey said, you're going to attract people because you're excited and that's going to, then people are going to want to do it, get results. And then we're going to have natural organic coaches converting. And guys, it's also really important just in general. And I, I've been stressing this to my coaches so much in the last few months. Like you guys, not you guys, we have to make sure our coaches are doing new programs every two months at least. Like I can't tell you, I, I have coaches that have been coaches six, eight months, 10 months. And they're like, I've only done a 21 day fix. Like what? Like, come on, you got to try something new. Mm -hmm. I actually had an idea for September. Remember, I was I wanted everyone to do an old school beach body program, one that you never did before, just to try new things and talk about it. You know, like I really think that's important too because coaches plateau and then they think this doesn't work anymore because they're doing the same thing over and over and over again. So I think that's another important component that we have to be on top of. Like, what's your next program? All right, after after sixty days is up. What are you doing next? Oh, you're going to do another round of it? Okay, good. But like, make sure you're tweaking your eating program or whatever to make sure you continue to get results. If you don't continue to get results, it's time to move on to another program. Like, we got to be on top of them to remind them. And that keeps the excitement going. Mm -hmm. To start something new is exciting, you know? You know, Chris, I, I, you I have a really good point because I just had this conversation with um, one of our coaches, Bash, I think. She was a customer to coach, um, you know, lead. And it's funny, she has been doing, so size, 21 day fix, T25, and master's hammer and chisel. She does for the past, let's see, for the past six months, she's been doing one of those programs, her favorite workout from each. Oh, she's making up her own. <laughs> right. And so I said to her, I, you know, and she reached out to me and she goes, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this new program because, you know, I just, I just don't know what to do anymore. And I said, well, my gosh, you've been all over the place with your programs. Why aren't you just 
following one, I said, change your program every two months. And she's like, I never really thought about that. I said, well, the point is, is that the programs are proven to work. <laughs> so do the program the way it says. Don't just do the moves and the workouts that you like because then you're not confusing your muscles. You know, it all goes back to what? P90X back in, you know, 1995 or whenever it came out that that's what works. And so people still, they don't get it. They just kind of do what they like. And so we still, just because our coaches are coaches, we're still their coaches. No, you're right. Yeah. Totally. yeah. You know, I just want to say what's been really cool is um, the seven day free group schedule. I actually gave to all of um, my coaches. So they've been doing it, not in the free group, but they've been doing it on their own and we're sharing it in our group. And like Turbo Fire 30, I mean, we were like, I was not expecting that right off the bat. I'm like, holy crap, it's four o'clock in the morning. You're like, she's, <laughs> picking, she's calling this a warm up, and I'm like uh, in a full sweat already. But we were giggling and laughing and we're videoing ourselves doing it. I mean, it was hilarious. And then to see, you know, Jericho half and half, I mean, this is giving a lot of us, you know, the, the light bulb, like, holy crap, there's so much out there that you just don't realize because, you know, you're, you're, you know, checking out the newest program or whatever, but there are so many good old programs out there. Yeah. I want to do Shailene Extreme. I've heard such wonderful things about it. I've never done it. And I've heard people get like sick results with it. I'll do it with you. I want to do that one too. All right. I always wanted to do that one. Yeah. I mean, we are doing, we are, I can't believe this, but at our super, our super Saturday event, we're doing turbo cook and I'm, I'm petrified because I could not keep up. It was like, <laughs> like a crack. Yeah. And then booty dance. I'm like, what is going on right now? <laughs> I felt like, a hey, I don't know. are you guys, are you guys doing that intentionally or just cause is that, was that planned? Um, it, it kind of worked out that way. Um, we have um, a master uh, a master trainer. Her name's um, uh, Becky Conser, and she broke her leg. So she's, she's actually been at, you know, at all the events, and she was hoping that they were going to actually have permission to uh, run Court of Force, but they – they didn't launch it for the master trainers yet. So, but they are, uh, just so you know, they're, they're uh, giving coaches access to um, MMA Speed Court of Force Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They oh, are. God. Are they? Yeah, that's what we were told at leadership. So, yeah, any coach? It should be. I saw it's the email. They're on demand now. It is? Huh? Yeah, I went in today. All you have to do is go into the um, challenge du jour. And um, I think that's what they call it. And go back back down to previous workouts. I couldn't believe my eyes. So, you know, it's actually, it's good that you said that because I was wondering about that. Um, you know, we didn't get any notification. But anyway, Becky found us a turbo kick instructor. So okay. she, she thought that that was a good idea. But, you know, I might reach out to her and say, hey, listen, why don't, why don't you run? Because we could totally project it. And it could be just as awesome as doing turbo kick, but yeah, absolutely. Oh, really? And Sharice just commented, thank you, Sharice, that they, on the national wake up call, they did mention it's going to be available all weekend for Super oh. Friday. That's who, uh, who else that hasn't spoke want to add on? Teresa. Hey, Teresa. I had a question. So for the quarter force test group, are we're all going to do our own thing with our own groups the way that we normally do, but I love some of the stuff that we had, like for our seven day group. Are you going to be, have more tips that we can add into it because I kind of I know I have a couple people that are really pushed with the court of four so I'm trying to push them a little bit harder so I'm just kind of curious if we're doing anything different to try to do this test group like I think you were saying you were gonna no, no it's, it's just gonna be the actual program it's gonna be the program and just follow the program okay I, wanna so I, I, I personally would love love and I know this is a lot of work but but I would love to do a coach's test group, like all of us. Like, I don't care if it's 300 people. Like, I just think how fun would that be? I would love it. <laughs> it's a lot, like, to say, like, do your own challenge groups, but also, like, be in this test group. So it would just be copy and pasting your post. But 
Like how fun would it be for all of us together? I would love it. I mean, just to also push myself a little bit. I mean, I love running my challenge groups, but when you've been, you know, I think some of us feel the same way when you've been doing it for over two and a half years, like it's hard because you're always rah rahing everybody else. Right. You know? And sometimes it's to, a, it's kind of quiet. You know what I mean? So, so, you know what will spice it up though? I really believe this because if you actually take quarter force, you're like, you know what? I'm going to follow this nutrition guide. I'm going to do my med. I'm going to treat it as if I'm in a test group. That's going to fire yourself up. Trust me. Because oh, it will. And I'm excited. I'm like, if I can beat the 21, the ultimate reset, like I'm excited. Like in my yeah. head, I'm like, all right, I, I, I did that. I, I can pull this off. So I'm excited for me, but I was just wondering like what other things can I push down to build that excitement as well? You know, um, let them see that you're excited. Yeah. Like go live. Is that, but would you guys want to do a big ass test group? Like coaches, just us, you know, all of team perseverance with your teams, your coaches, not challengers. Like you would do your own separate thing with challengers, mm -hmm. but wouldn't that be fun? I think so. I mean, we could do it for the I court. Mean, we could do it this month in November, starting on the 14th, have our own, we do our own and we have a team perseverance, uh, coaches, uh, court of force group as well. I, I mean, I, it's up to you guys. If you don't want to be in it, like, it's fine. But yeah. if you do, then let's do one big-ass group and, and just have fun with it, right? I think it would be fun because, like, we never get to be together, ever, all yeah. of us, right? Kristen, I, I had, um, just because we had already posted this and had already planned on it, we already have 30 people starting on the 7th, oh. first Monday of the month. I mean, we were going with that. But... If you do do something like that, I'd be happy to post for it for my own personal, you know, fun motivation because that's a group that we'll be running. But I don't know if anybody saw, but the content guide was posted as well. I just um, saw yeah. um, Anybody else I spoke? Liz Baldenbrook, yeah. Maureen, Sharice, Karen, Kristen O'Dell, any, Jen Holman, I think Joe, there's Jen. I didn't see her face. Real quick, is the um, Court of Forest is it a different workout for the 30 days or is it set up something like 21 day fix where it's like 30 days? I know it's 30 days, but is it like repetitive over week to week or is it like, no? No, okay. oh no. No, there's, no. um, oh, how many workouts are there, Gina? All I know yeah. is the last two weeks you're going to be, this is the good thing, guys. This is the thing you got to be ready. The workouts, a lot of them are 45 minutes. So, which I think is good. It's time to get away from, 10 minute workouts, 15 minute workouts. Like, you know, the, the shortest workouts, 26 is maybe one or two that are 35, 36 and the rest are 45. And that, when you get to the last two weeks and Gina and Christine can vouch, it's like every day is you're adding any of the five minute core workout or a 15 minute core workout on top of the workout. You are in plank a lot, doing a lot of core. And that's why I think it's that good. And I think it also People, you know, Kristen's theory, and, and we, you know, and I think it could play into it is that these these our challengers that are doing these very very short workouts kind of think it's quick, it's an easy fix, and it plays into their business. You know, when people realize they got to work harder to get more results, back to P ninety X days, and they're doing forty five minute workouts, the work ethic is there to get the results, which would convert them to probably harder working coaches. I think people that are looking for those quick fix workouts, like I, I can only work out 20 minutes. Like and when they become coaches, I think that their mentality is microwave mentality. So I think, I, I think I'm seeing that more. And I, I talked to a lot of other coaches about it. Like, like that, that's their work ethic too. Like I need to, I need to make money quick and it's not happening quick enough. So I'm quitting mm. or I'm just, this isn't working for me. You know, like, you know, a half hour workout. That's all I want. That's it. Like I'm not working any harder than that. That's it. I'm in, I'm out, you know? Yeah. And I kind of think it's translating to some people's businesses that yeah. they're not being patient and they're not understanding the process as much as like us, the older coaches who have tried those. I, I, I really think it correlates like those longer programs, like those 60 day programs, those 90 day programs, not a 21 day program, I'm not saying it's bad. It works, but I'm just saying, I wonder if there's a correlation between the mindset for the people who are attracted to that, you know, cause I have people that are like, I can't do any more than 30 minutes. I won't do any more than 30 minutes. I'm like, okay, it was 15 minutes earlier. Could you get up 15 minutes earlier? You know, and they just won't do it. So I just think it's a mindset too. Um, not willing to, to go the extra mile. So I don't know. 
you guys Kristen, I think it goes to I think it goes back to the whole conversation again when they are getting started it's that whole qualifying coach you know coach to coach relationship that's going to happen like is this going to work are you I want to coach people who want to work hard are you gonna work hard because I'm going to work hard. So, you're, also, you're looking for your tribe. That's what you're doing too. Exactly. So it's, again, it's all, I think that conversation is, you know, it's all really important. Yeah, we focus on the why and why you're doing this, but it's not like somebody says, oh, I'm doing this because I want to be healthier so I can live longer and, you know, create good habits for my children. Well, yeah, that's important, but do you want to work hard? Because this isn't going to happen overnight because if you're just looking you know, to lose a few pounds to look good in a banquet dress come the holiday season. Well, that's not who I'm looking to work with. So I think, you know, again, like you said, it's the qualification. But ultimately, the best qualifier is a challenge group, right? You're going to know. No, you absolutely. 100%. Yeah. I mean, it was proven in the, with the stats I showed you guys. And guys, thank you for getting on at Thursday night. I know it's almost 10 o'clock. And thank you all of you that are still on and didn't leave. Like, it says a lot about that. You know, you're in and we want to make the change and, you know, wasn't you didn't pop on and pop off. Like, it speaks volumes that you guys are here and we're talking about it. Anybody that hasn't spoke want to speak up? Because I know a handful of us have spoken. There's some who haven't said anything. I just wanted to say that um, something else that I'm doing. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay, sorry. Um, something else that I'm doing with my team is I have a photo album of all of the before and afters that we've been getting our hands on. And so we're running a competition where people have to actually post their before and afters and actually take their stats. And if people do that, they have to have the before taken by a certain time and have the after taken by a certain time, then they're entered into a raffle for a prize. And people are pretty psyched about that. So I think that'll be cool just because I think people get away from taking their stats, taking their before and afters. And so that really encourages completing the whole program. Um, and something else that I wanted to share about what I've done differently this year is just really focusing on giving people accountability and support, but not having it be all from me. And I, I think I've shared this before, but like everybody has got a partner for everything in God's name. Like you hit Emerald around the same time, then you have a message trail of like a little Emerald's village. You are working the business, then you have an accountability partner. And I'm in that message thread too, because the fact that I'm in there makes them feel like they need to report into each other more. Um, in the challenge group, they sign up for accountability partners. So when people post their sweaty pic, they're saying like, Cindy, Pio Scout was so hard today. How was it for you? And it creates this conversation and this support and this kind of buddy network that just goes such a long way. And I feel like it's really transformed my groups. I would say you ladies are so, I told Kristen, when it comes to being creative, like I just, I, it's like stuff like that, Sharice, that's like gold. Yeah, it's good stuff. Like it's good stuff. And the, the stuff some of you ladies come up with creativity, like. <laughs> He's yeah, like, just get your workout just, done. Like, just shut up. Give me the freaking. I'll talk for ten seconds. I'm good. But like, <laughs> photo game. Like, I can't. Halloween costume gonna be, Dave. What? <laughs> then what's your Halloween costume yeah, gonna be? No, my daughters all keep asking me that. I need. We need to wear something. But I just, I just, I guess in summary, guys, I want to go back to our roots and go back to the coach basics. And after, I literally like my jaw drop when they showed the timing and what was going on at the network around the same time when our team stopped. And I'm like, wow, we are totally victims of, of this as a whole. And, you know, we may not be a 45,000 size team like Scotty Hobbs, not but, yet. You know, but I can tell you right now, there's very few of those, but we are one of the biggest teams in the are, whole network. Really? Yeah. Cause there's a lot of people that were there. Yeah. They have 500 person teams, 800 person teams. You know, there's a big gap. You have like the 45,000 people teams, some of the founding coaches, but then it really drops off, you know, like it's a lot smaller. So we are right in the thick of it. So I think if we all as leaders go back to the challenge groups, maybe have a co team perseverance challenge group as a whole for coaches. I think we should do that. Get our inactive coaches active. Oh, I was just going to say, Sharice, um, I stole a, um, a doc that Alexis Whalen made for her coaches test group. And it's literally like what, what we, the, the emails that we get from the, 
the JJ test group at beachbody.com, the people that say um, you have to send in your um, one day, um, your selfie, your poses, your befores, and a bathing suit, or whatever. She, she did the whole thing and she's giving it to our coaches and saying, and like literally sending her own email address saying, you need to send me all of this, you know, like so it's a legit test group. So I have that and I could share it with us and we could do it in our groups too. I mean, it doesn't have to be as hardcore as like the, all this, but I honestly, it works because you really have to get your homework in. Like we have homework assignments. We had to make videos. I don't think she's having to make videos, but like even at the end of ours, um, our 30 days, I would love everybody to, um, to give us their before and afters. And I want to do like, maybe we'll pick the top five best transformations and put them out to the team perseverance page and all the coaches can vote who the number one best transformation is, you know, you have all these ideas and I, then they win, they win swag or something fun, you know, just to get people accountable. But yeah, so I'll share that too. I still totally stole it. Let's uh, I want to wrap up cause I know you got, it's just late and um, anybody have any last important things they want to say? I think we got the message across. We're all, we're, we're all good, good. You guys We're good. Come on. I want to get a good screenshot. Everybody we're smile awesome. with thumbs up. Come on, on the screen. Let me get it. I'll tell you three. One, two, three. Yes. <laughs> oh, at 10 o'clock at night, we all look so cheery. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for getting on. It really means a lot to me. And let's, let's. Uh, look how cute Kristen's baby. I know. So cute. So cute, Kristen. And let's enjoy. Have a great weekend, everybody. Good Halloween. Super Saturdays. Enjoy your Super Saturdays, everybody. And we'll, uh, we'll talk soon. Good night. Bye, guys. Good night.